Thank you, everybody. So we've formed um, a subcommittee. I don't expect we're going to have a lot of meetings, but we thought it was important to have a posted um, and somewhat formalized subcommittee to advise the Nantucket Historical Commission about um, potential grants that it might advocate for, or apply for, be a part of um, with preservation activities around uh, on Nantucket. And this is a meeting of the subcommittee that's being recorded and it will be post posted and available on the town YouTube site. Um, and the members of the subcommittee are myself, Hillary Hedges Rayport, uh, chair of the commission, uh, Mickey Rowland. Can you hear me, Mickey? Can you hear me, Mickey? Um, my, you know, my interconnect connection is getting slowly worse. Let me, I'm gonna step away for one minute and see if I can adjust something and I'll okay. be right back. Okay. Um, and Georgia, Georgia, you can hear me. Yes. Okay, yes. great. Um, and we're, uh, as usual, being advised by our phenomenal town preservation planner, Holly Backus is here. Thank you, Holly. And we're being joined today by Ken Bogrand, um, town real estate advisor and um, chair of the C. Are you chair of the CPC, Ken? Yes. Yeah. Chair of the Community Preservation Committee, and also Mary Bergman, um, Nantucket Preservation Trust, frequent um, uh, applicant and for CPC funds and sponsor projects. So yeah, thank fun. you. Thanks, Mary. Thank you, everyone, for being here. So um, we've got uh, some things going on um, as far as studies. We have a successful Lee uh, applied for and awarded Massachusetts Historical Commission uh, study planning survey planning grant, which will be the first in a continual stream of applications to the MHC for planning grants. So we've got a lot of study activity led by Holly. Um, and then but there's lots of things that can be done. Other things, um, we have a big initiative with um, historic preservation of the old walks, uh, on sidewalks and streets that contain artifacts. Um, and there are other initiatives as well. So um, this is a forum for us to just come to some kind of consensus or short list uh, so that we can go back to our uh, broader commission on August 20th and make some recommendations. Um, so, Holly, do you, or maybe we could start just briefly, Ken, could you just talk for the benefit of, just to bring everybody up to speed about the CPA, the CPC, how grants are awarded and what the parameters are? Uh, sure, uh, the uh, <clears throat> CPC has funding that uh, comes from um, two sources, uh, the uh, uh, surcharge, on your real estate bill and a grant, um, some level of grant, matching grant from the state. Uh, it is uh, required to make an allocation in three areas, 10% uh, to open space, 10% to historic resources, and 10% uh, and to community housing. Open space now also includes recreational land. Uh, and then the other 5% uh, goes to administration and the other 65% uh, is uh, to be determined by the community, the committee to make recommendations for town to town meeting for approval of the applic based on the applications that the uh, committee receives. Uh, and uh, the uh, the area that is the one thing that I wanted to be able to point out is that that in the term in the area of historic preservation and in the other areas as well, uh, the CPC is not allowed to be able to provide funding for things which are the responsibility of the town itself. Um, so to the extent that, uh, that the town has, for instance, the responsibility to, uh, to uh, look after the cobblestones, for instance, that's something that the CPC couldn't be get involved with because that's the town's responsibility. But with respect to, for instance, say development of planning relative to improving something that may be a town responsibility, that's something that we can look at and have done so in the past. Okay. So um, when, 
Oh yes, go ahead, Georgia. Um, Ken, I have a question about your initial statement about the allocation of 10% um, for historic, uh, for open space, historic and um, housing. Uh, and 5% for administration and 65% for separate recommendations that you then send to town meeting. How was that all determined? What do you, what do you, what do you mean? Uh, how is what you, your very first statement said that the way CPC funds are spent? Well, the, the statute, the, the Community Preservation Act directs us that we have to legally allocate 10% of the fund to each of those three categories can allocate up to 5% of the funds for administration and the balance is uh, in the discretion of the community committee in terms of looking at addressing what is perceived to be the most critical needs of the community based on the applications that the community has and the committee's role is to make a recommendation to town meeting because town meeting approves the allocations. Well, that's interesting. If there is, for instance, as so often has been the case with respect to open space or recreational, there aren't sufficient applications to <clears throat> award up to 10%, then any shortfall in that category is put into designated reserves reserved for that category, which funds would then be used in future to be able to uh, provide the basis, the funding for, for those categories. And, so you'll see in a number of years over the last little while where we'll go two or three years where we don't have very much for open space, for instance, and then one year uh, we'll have a huge amount. Like two years ago, when we did the funding for the playground over on the handicapped accessible playground off of South Shore Road. Uh, that was a huge amount, but and it was way beyond what we would have had available from the just the regular sources of funding. But because we had the reserves that were there, we were able to apply those reserves in that category. And the reserves that, that aren't previously used can only be applied in the category from which they are created. I don't know if you know the answer to this, but my, that's, you know, I, I was um, aware of this CPC when it was originally created 20 years ago. And I, I don't recall that being the originally an original requirement, um, but not that it's relevant. It's the requirement now. It doesn't matter. Ignore the ignore the comment. It's an inter it's interesting that it is now reflecting that sixty five percent are based are basically recommendations that you then send to the town for approval. Okay, thank you. Well, basically, we send one hundred percent of our recommendations to the town for approval, but really? we have to allocate. We have to indicate how much of those how much is allocated in each category to make sure that we have allocated at least 10 percent uh, yeah. in each of those three required categories okay thank you i see that mary bergman has a hand up yeah hi <clears throat> thanks um i had a question for ken which was i know when um applying for when a group has received cpc funds they get reimbursed by the cpc so how might it work with the NHC? It doesn't have its own funds. Well, it, 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 will, it will work that way. With Well, what we've done with respect to the town, for instance, is that, that uh, if there is an approved project and then there is, for instance, a contract in place uh, because of the fact that, that, that you probably wouldn't have funds to disperse, what you would do is you would come to us and get approval for the disbursement of the funds in the first place uh, and that would then be approved by the commission or the committee. Uh, and once that approval is then <clears throat> a check could be, could be issued by finance uh, with respect to that because it would be within the amounts that were approved by town meeting and with, within, with, with, subject to the review of the committee members themselves or the project manager that this is an appropriate disposition as approved by the commission. So sorry, I'm I'm a little confused. So for the town, because the NHC might do the work to apply for the grant, but it's the town that would be getting the grant. Well, I, the, 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 you as an agency of the town would be getting the grant as a as a town as a town committee. Right? Okay. And, and then you would be you would if 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 your recommendation is with respect to the approval of a contract for for something. Okay, if that is approved by the commission committee recommended <clears throat> to town meeting and approved at town meeting 
then when it comes to dispersing the payments under the terms of that contract, you would make application to the commission through your, uh, through your designated uh, representative on the commission saying that this is, this is necessary at this stage of the contract. They have provided these services. It is appropriate for us to play. We seek your approval. We would then give you approval and that approval then would then go to the finance department and the finance department I would see. issue a check out. Uh, so we wouldn't. You, would, you wouldn't have to issue the check in the first place. Uh, okay, so we wouldn't to need to have a reimbursement. That's right. It, it's okay. We only make that with respect to the to the town entities because okay. it seemed stupid to be duplicative of a process uh, that is complicated enough as it is in the first place. But with but with respect to all other grants, the beneficiary of the grant has to make the payment. And they come back to seek reimbursement for it, which is a way to be able to say because the committee has a legal responsibility to ensure and report each year to the DOR that all disbursements were made in accordance with the approval of the application and the grant of the funds approved at town meeting by the voters. So we, we have, we have, that's why we have a process with respect to reimbursement because of the fact that if it were the other way around, there was, there's not necessarily any way that we could be absolutely sure that it was done in accordance with what was authorized and we would be in a very difficult position to have to make our, our legal representation to the DOR each year. Right, you wouldn't want to have to claw the money back or. Well, yeah, and, and or even knowing how to be able to claw it back. So, right. Because right. the fact is, is that, that what we, the process that we have in place means that we have to make sure before we reimburse you that the money was sent in accordance, spent in accordance with, with what was approved okay. at town meeting. Okay, and can um, can you give us a sense of minimums or, or maximums of what can be applied for? No, there is no maximum. No, no, no. And no minimum. Okay, great. No, and there, it, absolutely not. And, and and the only the only criteria is that it fits within what we're eligible to be able to do, and then the committee obviously at the hearings at the, at the hearings in the fall we have public hearings for each of the applicants and that the committee meets in several sessions considering the various all requests that we have. Uh, last year was the first year in the 20 years that, that, that I've been involved with this that we had fewer requests than the actual funding. So we were able to clear up out a couple of the outstanding uh, 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 bond payments that we, that we were making on a regular basis. But normally, in a situation, we, we generally get requests that are three to five times greater than the amount of funding that we have available. And so we, we have to go through a process of being able to uh, uh, be able to make a determination as what is in the overall best interest of the town, which is our responsibility to make recommendation uh, to town meeting. Uh, okay. and, the, and the fact is, is that what's really interesting uh, in the 20 years that these recommendations have been made, there is only one recommendation that was only ever overruled at town meeting. And that was the recommendation we made for a snow making machine on Mill Hill. <laughs> so has anyone asked for funds for a bowling alley? Uh, no, but, I'm, but I'm, not, I'm not sure. I mean, that could fit within, it might fit within recreation uh, if you'd be able to, to I mean, we clearly, I don't know how you'd be able to apply for that, but. Uh, but that certainly uh, uh, conceptually perhaps in the <laughs> recreational uh, 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 situation. So that's funny, but it's probably not historic. I don't know, candle pin bowling, maybe. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, thank you. Does anybody have any other just logistical questions before? Because I'd like to start putting some ideas. I, I hope we can generate some ideas. I just, if it's okay for um, yep. the committee here. Um, I'm on the Community Preservation Coalition, which is the statewide coalition's webpage. If you haven't looked at it yet, I highly recommend it. I wanted to put that up on the, on the to share with you all. Oops, sorry. I always do that. Um, because it gives a list of what um, projects can qualify for historic preservation. Um, and I think that would help start the conversation. So again, this is the communitypreservation.org page. It's got all the different criteria, but here is for um, historic preservation and what projects do qualify. 
um, their overview for historic, historic project qualify, qualify eligibility flow chart and the steps. Um, but I thought was pretty cool is um, all the different things here that they have uh, documents on historic resources, for example, is okay. one. Yeah, with respect to the documents, we've done a lot of work with respect to the town clerk in terms of preservation of all of the historical records that the Catherine Stover had. And we're now also working, uh, we've done year one of a three year project with respect to the, the uh, tax red records of the, of the town. Uh, one of the things too is that, 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 for instance, in that situation, which where, where that was a three or four year project, uh, we, we can only make uh, an approval or recommendation with respect to the year in question. And while we clearly work to try and following through on projects that have multi-year uh, terms in order to be able to do them, there is no commitment that be simply because we were able to fund year one, that we were definitely going to be able to fund year two and three based on what the applications are before the CPC in that particular year. But it doesn't mean that you can't come back in year three or year four uh, if you haven't been able to get them in year two and three if it's a, if it's a more than one year project. Okay, thank you. And thank you, Holly. Um, so, um, Holly, I know you are very close to these issues. Do you want to start us off with some ideas of how the NHC might um, utilize CPA funds? I do definitely think that uh, CPA funds would definitely be um, worthwhile for us to, once we establish this uh, survey plan that we're just put the RF, RFP out um, for. Um, oh, great. So that actually went out. That, that went out That's awesome. um, on Monday. So we have Fantastic. until August 30th, 31st um, to receive quotes. Um, and yeah, we're, we're going to start that process. So we're very, very excited about that. Um, and I, I do... Oh, could I just ask you to stop sharing the screen oh, so yeah, I I'm can sorry. see everybody? So um, with that, you know, we know that at the end of that project in, in um, 2020, we're going to have a plan to how to tackle our historic resources, which is obviously something that we've been grappling on. How, how do we how do we do this? And I think once we have that plan, we're, we'll be able to narrow down um, where we want other projects to go. And from a um, just from listening to other communities, the other 26 communities that are CLGs within the Commonwealth, when they were going over their proposed projects that they received CLG funding for, um, there are other communities that, and I want to reach out to a couple of them, that were in a multi-phased process just like that, just like this so the survey plan that we're going to have. And they went from getting the federal funding with the CLG to also applying for um, CPA funds. And I think that they would be a, a great source of um, brainstorming, if you will, on how they did that. Um, obviously, a, a we as a town wanna to apply for future um, CLG funding. Again, that 10% they're, they're required by the, the federal law, the, the SHPO's offices are, are required to, to give out. Um, that would also, if we show over here that Nantucket's actually applied for our very own CPA funding source through the CPC that's been established since what, 2001? Um, I, I think that would show that Nantucket is not just trying to utilize federal funding, but also our own local funding. I think it would it would really show that. And as well as, there's a, again, there's other communities that have done it. So to, ex to, to go to what you said, Ken, about a multi-year project, um, I think it would be wise for the historical commission, the historic district as a CLG together to kind of brainstorm on how we want to um, look at CPA as a source of funding for our historic resources as a multi-year approach once we have this uh, plan established with this with this um, CLG project that we just started. If that makes any sense, please let me know if it doesn't. No. Oh, so, Holly, so just the, one point, one point. The other thing too is, is that with respect to your CLG uh, application, don't be shy about using the money that the CPA has funded to the town for the preservation of the town's records and also for the money that the town has made with respect to a grant 
with respect to the, the preservation of the assessor's records. Yeah. So you've got a, you've got a track record there in Correct. terms of showing that the, that the town has already done this even before you guys were a CLG. Absolutely. And I will tell you, Ken, that was included in our application to, to Massachusetts Historical, to the National Park Service, about our history of being a, a CPA community within the Commonwealth. So that actually helped us, I think. Yeah. Absolutely. So the idea is to apply for um, Community Preservation Act funds to pay for surveys and, you know, our, our big, big priority from the Historical Commission is to survey historic resources island wide and we will have a plan in a year about how we're going to do that, which neighborhoods we're going to prioritize, how we're going to get to all the neighborhoods, all the resources, and um, uh, community-wide. So, um, so that's one idea, is the matching funds. Now, today, we are matching our MHC grant with um, free cash from the town. It's been, it's part of the PLUS budget. Um, so that would be another source would be to say to plus, you know, keep 20, it, they're, they're, the, the grants are not going to be bigger than eighteen twenty thousand dollars $20,000 for these surveys. So we would be saying keep eighteen or $20,000 in the budget to match these surveys. And the reason why it's um, that, sorry, the MHC grants are 50% grants. So say it's a, you know, 40000 Thirty to forty thousand dollar project, and it's because that's kind of as much as you can get done in a year. I mean, I guess if we hired like all of the preservation consultants and brought them all to Nantucket, we could move faster. But it's typically kind of chunked at at that pace because um, it has to be overseen by staff, and that's just sort of the pace it can move. Um, so that's one idea. Um, any other ideas for grant targets for grants? including Ken and Mary, things that you feel need to be done. My hand again. Yeah, jo Georgia. Mickey, you should go first. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks, Dirk. Um, I, you know, I have a couple of thoughts and these are just sort of beginning concepts. And to be honest, they're, um, they're probably as much to do with the Commission on Disability as they are perhaps related to historic resources. So I think it's a, it's a viable topic for this group. Um, one, one thing that I've thought about for years is to try to, and this I think fall into the category of recreation, is to try to get the Brant Point Lighthouse to be an accessible, um, to create a, an accessible route to the, to the lighthouse, a wheelchair accessible route. And um, there are certainly obstacles um, to do that. I, I have some ideas, um, but you know, just in general, um, that would provide obviously disabled access to a very important um, recreational beach on the island. Um, and you know, perhaps in the, I don't know what the I don't remember currently what the state of the lighthouse is. Last I remember, it was kind of needing a lot of paint and. Uh, Repair and maybe at the same time that the lighthouse could be restored or rent, you know. So I can I can talk about that, um, Mickey. Um, so that you know, as you all are aware, that is owned by the the U.S. Coast Guard, Correct. and it's not within their um, facilities to relinquish, if you will. So there's been a lot of public um, questioning on the status of it. Um, I've actually been talking with a um, U.S. Coast Guard rep from Woods Hole area um, about the maintenance of it. Um, they are, because they receive a lot of pushback and um, thankfully a summer resident said, hey, reached out to me and I've been the in-between with them. Um, so they are, the U.S. Coast Guard is aware of um, the concerns. There was concerns on lead paint. So they had a, um, a lead paint, um, I guess work done, but I think it was February. And now they're trying to um, figure out a plan because I also said, hey, you know, yes, this is a natural historic landmark, you know, individually listed, but it's owned by the federal government. You still need to get approval for any obviously um, work that you do. So um, that's in the works. 
Um, I'd like to see it quicker, but as we all know, we think uh, local government is slow, federal government's even slower. <laughs> so, but if I, um, I, I do think that's a, that's a great idea. Um, I don't know if anybody has brought that up to the Coast Guard at all, um, but I can, you know, definitely, I need to shoot them another email and find out the status more. So one thing to be aware of is um, there's also conversations with the Coast Guard about Great Point Light. Um, and I don't know if you know Diane Lang. Holly, do you know Diane? Yeah. So you might want to shoot her an email um, because I know she has a plan. Um, Great Point Light is having, so in that case, the Coast Guard owns like the light structure and the trustees of reservations have a contractual right to paint and repair the outside which they do at great expense. But the problem is um, there's water coming in behind the concrete wall. It's also not a historic structure, technically. It's not 50 years old. It's um, from 1980, so, and it's a reconstruction. So um, there have been a lot of discussions about that. And maybe we could just tackle our lighthouses at the same time since they- Sorry, I'm receiving years. a COVID phone call oh. about my child. School. Oh. Oh, okay, that's not good. Um, but Mickey, you know, my thought about that idea, I guess we could decide to take on restoration of our lighthouses because Sankety, Sankety is private, is not owned by the Coast Guard anymore, correct? Isn't that right, Georgia? No, I think it is owned by the Coast Guard, but the sun is the Scott Is it owned by the Sunset Trust? No, I don't think they own it, but I think they, they maintain it. I don't know. Okay. So maybe it's a similar thing with the trustees where they have like, because the, the, the casing is different from the navigational light. Um, right. So anyway, I mean, I guess we could decide that we're going to make a priority of preservation and restoration of our historic lighthouses or reconstructed lighthouses. Everything okay, Holly? Sorry, my apologies. Do you have to go pick up someone from something? I have a feeling I do. Um, thankfully, they not only call you with an automated thing, but they email you, so you're not. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, let us know. So, but as far as the access, the path and everything, I mean, I guess if we wanted to re restore the lighthouses and make a project of that, I don't think it would be a grant ready for September because we don't have permission from the Coast Guard. And I don't know if having the path, well, I think it's a great idea is something that's about historic preservation about open space yeah open space and yeah. access it's a great idea but that doesn't mean that you can't apply for it the nhc well the fact is is that you're you're applying for something in that category and that, and if you have a reason to be able to uh, an authority to be able to implement what you're applying for i don't see why that wouldn't be I allowed. See. I see. Well, you know, Hillary, maybe that could be also a sort of a joint application between the Commission on Disabilities and the NHC. I mean, that, yes. That cover better, I think. Yes. Um, well, another idea is to implement some of our work and advice that we've gotten on the sidewalks, um, the particularly historic sidewalks. Um, can I share my screen? Um, hang on, I have to find the document I want to share. I have so many. Um, I just wanted to share. Um, hang on, I have to find. I have too many things open. Um, okay, this should work now. So as you all recall, we received um, specific advice about, here it is, how to go about the restoration of the sidewalks on Main Street, which have a, probably more historic material in them than any other stretch um, and are also heavily used. Um, so what was recommended in our engineering report, um, so 
they suggest developing a toolkit of potential options and design solutions and deploying each where it makes more sense, most sense along the street. For example, in one area where nearby entrances are elevated on stoops, raising the entire sidewalk a few inches um, to eliminate offsets, tripping hazards, accessibility impediments from rising tree roots. But just a short distance down the street where entrance doors and thresholds are right at grade, raising the sidewalk might not be a viable solution. Um, and undertaking design and rehabilitation of streets, curb sidewalks in a unified manner. Um, one thing that's not mentioned in here about the sidewalks is also the, um, the need for matching replacement material. There's a lot of stuff that's worked its way into the street that would need to be removed as part of a restoration. So this would be a project that while maintaining the sidewalks is a municipal obligation, this would be a project that would take a really close look and develop approaches um, and a design treatment to restore this corridor. Um, <laughs> also the setting that he also mentions, um, recommends setting in a permeable, some air, surface, subsurface that drains water well. I just think it's a distinct project that's actually quite complicated and specific. Um, and there's a lot of, there's just more work than I could, the more specialized restoration work than I've seen being undertaken as a municipal project. And, you know, I've looked at a bunch of them with sidewalks. I'd like to ask Ken how he views that as falling. Um, I mean, I understand what he said before about not being able to do things the town itself is responsible for, but studying the methodology for it. So if we provided some guidelines about methodology with regard to the sidewalk, how would that how would that work? Could, well, I think the answer, the, the answer to that is that I don't know. And I, it, it would, that's why <clears throat> I've talked to Holly in the past that I wanted to get some sense of the framework that you're talking about. And then I can clear with yeah. Stuart at the coalition up in Boston to get a clarity with respect to where does it fit within the scope of the town's responsibility? And where does it fit within the respect of a contract or a study to be able to provide information. So the answer is I don't know, but but what I what Holly and I have talked about is is that that <clears throat> when you're when you're thinking about this, getting something to me early on before you make the application, I can then run that by <clears throat> the people up in Boston and see if there's a way that it can be worked in uh, in terms of the parameters of what the CPC can do and what the CPC is not allowed to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well that's certainly a fundamental question with that project idea. Right. Um, you know, related to that, um, and this is probably again even more removed from the NHC and close, more closely related to the Commission on Disabilities, but it sounds, another idea that I had was, sounds quite similar to what you just mentioned, Hillary, and, and this would be to basically probably fund a study or hire a firm to, to study the um, most of the sidewalks downtown that are affected by tree roots and telephone poles and hydrants um, in terms of accessibility around the town, because there's so many obstacles on the sidewalks and there's really no clear solution as to how to, how to get around them, except to, except to go on the street. <clears throat> so there might be a, um, a possibility to have somebody study, you know, multiple points around the town that, that um, they could make recommendations for specific, like Milk Street, you know, Main Street has lots of obstacles in terms of tree roots, but it's pretty wide. Milk Street has huge obstacles because of trees and tree roots, but the sidewalks are completely overwhelmed. And, you know, what's the solution to do there? It's not that, it's not very clear. So this, this may not, again, be an NHC issue, but it, I would think that it might apply to CPC, so. So one of the th things that's different about 
the restoration, I think the fact that it's restoration, like, because there's so, there's such a large question about how to handle the material and how to source new material that is appropriate, you know, that's not, there's a discovery process. Um, mm -hmm. It's not just solving a problem of how do you make this flat? It's like, how do you, how, how it's a historic restoration of a historic site. With respect to the, the Mickey's point, uh, I'm just looking at the uh, chart of the allowable purposes, uh, the generic chart, and it just says, with respect to rehab and, and re rehabilitation and restoration, uh, funds could be allocated to make capital improvements or extraordinary repairs to make assets functional for the intended use, including, and this is goes to make Mickey's point, including improvements to comply with federal, state, or local building or access codes or federal standards for rehabilitation of historic properties. Mm -hmm. So I uh, that, that language uh, has the possibility of being interpreted reasonably broadly within, with, with respect to the uh, complying with the federal, state, local building or access codes. Great. Okay. Thanks. Okay. That's good to know. I mean, the undergrounding, a lot of it, it's like, okay, this, these telephone poles just need to go away. Yeah, we, need, yeah but we, we, that's, that's, that's a solution that doesn't exist in our lifetimes, so. And yeah, so, I mean, we could, the town had put in the town, in the budget, a study to figure out how to do more undergrounding, but then that was the 2020 budget. So that got taken out. Right. And it didn't get put back in. So, you know, certainly undergrounding wires is of historic interest in the town and that there's precedent for that. I mean, there was a huge undergrounding project for specifically tourism and historic preservation reasons. So, I mean, we could bring that up again, but I just wouldn't want to bring up something that the town managers like, you know, okay. Ken just sort of said it. <laughs> I, I would I would just suggest you not bring it up because in fact that was the, the perfect timing would have been with respect to the new sewer line that's going out through the historic district, uh, and the logistics of making that happen became almost impossible because in fact to do that you'd have to replace all of the telephone poles and you have the five different people that are involved with them and look at the problems we're having just resolving the thing the issue with one telephone pole at the rotary in terms of trying to replace one pole not let alone put it underground so um i i, I just think that 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 uh, at this point in time in terms of all of the things that the town needs to do that becomes a non-starter and and i think that that uh pushing for that would create bad will as opposed to constructive perceived constructive suggestion just my two cents okay um any other comments about the idea of, yep georgia oh, i'm sorry comments about which idea hillary well so the idea that we're discussing is the idea of writing a grant to do a restoration design plan for the main street corridor no, I'm sorry. I have I, I, once we move on from that, I have another. I have some other thoughts. No, Hillary, Holly, I think that's a, that's a perfect application for it. I think we, that's that should be sort of a top of our list. Yeah, Holly, what what do you think about that design study? Out of our um, report. Yes. I see. Why not try to do that one? Do you feel that it's um, like there's enough work there? I mean, as our preservation planner, do you feel like there's enough specific work there that it's a substantial discrete project that would be valuable to the town? Well, the only thing I'm kind of, um, it's gonna be a multi-layered uh, approach. So it's not gonna be just us applying for the funding through CPA or CPC, um, but it's also then going through procurement just like anything else. So um, we would have to have a scope on exactly what we're looking for and all that. And I would think that we would need that before CPC would want to, I mean, I'm, I'm just confused. 
on on how we take that recommendation out of the report and make it make it a grant scalable. yeah scalable. make it a grant yeah. yeah do we can do we have to have like um how do we make if we wanted to go with this idea how do we turn it into a grant i mean we have recommendations from engineering we have tons of photos what, what you're going what you're going to do is you have to come up with a basis for the app what you're applying for in terms of you're asking for a grant to do X, Y, Z, and you're going to have to give details of what X, Y, D, Z is going to cost and what X, Y, Z is going to do and why this is important and how does it fit within the parameters of the criteria for historic preservation and rehabilitation. Do we have to actually have like already have bid it out to procurement? No. Well, oh, okay. you're, going to, you're, you're going to have to have some, you're going to have to have some, uh, uh, guesstimates of, of what it might cost because of the fact that's going to be the basis for the financial part of your grant. So okay. you, you've got you you will have had to have some preliminary discussions with respect to what the cost of doing this would be and what the benefit would be. Okay, all right. Um, does that answer your question, Holly? Okay. Georgia, you said you had it. Oh, sorry. So oh, any other comments oh. before? Okay. Do, do you have and what Georgia, what else? What other well, idea did you want to propose? We're ready to move to a, to further ideas. Not, not I think we are. Yeah. Yeah. I guess my thought would really involve our doing something jointly, probably with the preservation trust, because these are ideas that were floated around there. And that's the preservation trust has thought in the past about projects involving um, either the reuse of historic houses for, for uh, current uh, George, housing. George, I, I need to interrupt you. Uh, I, I have to recuse myself the minute you go into that discussion mm -hmm. because I'm chair of the Preservation Trust. And so I can't be perceived as having a perceived conflict of interest with respect to discussing something that will come before the, the commission even though it is in the in the planning stage, so uh, I, so if if any any other discussions with respect to involving NPT, I need to recuse myself and and not be a part of that discussion. And I haven't discussed this with Mary Bergman or anybody else. So so, I, I so Georgia, why don't you just present it as an idea that you have, and if it's appropriate to approach the trust, we can do that independently. Yeah, well, that's a, is that okay, Ken? Fine. Yeah. 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 Yes. Okay. These are just ideas that have been circulating, let's put it that way, that were circulating okay. and that may still have some uh, viability, some entity might undertake to do them, whether it's the Preservation Trust or some other entity. Uh, one, one was that historic houses that were either in danger of demolition by neglect or uh, otherwise available because they needed restoration uh, could be uh, purchased and funded either by a, an individual and then, and then, uh, well, let me, let me separate them into two categories. One would be the, we and the other entity, whichever it was, could help buy a historic house and restore it to the point that it could be reused for housing, for contemporary housing, as opposed to being- So it, it has to be publicly, can it be privately owned, Ken? Sorry to interject. So. I don't, yes. I don't, I, besides, I, I'm not sure that, that it's within your charter to be able to start to own houses. Uh, not that no, that's- Well, that's it. It wouldn't, a, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be, it would be, we would be funding it for a public entity to own, the Affordable Housing Trust or some other entity that could own it and, and rent it. You are more knowledgeable about what entity that would be than I. Yeah, I just think they, I don't know what a value we add there because they can apply for a grant to do that and they do. Okay, that's true. That's true. Um, the other the other project that that was floated at some point was the idea of attempting to fund, to create a fund to have a location for the 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 uh, placing of architectural artifacts that were thrown out of rest restored houses, improperly thrown out of restored houses. The issue then was, where are we gonna put them? Who's gonna pay for that warehouse or whatever? 
and uh, who's going to organize keeping them to be made available to people who would like to restore them and reuse them. Again, I don't know what the entity would be that would maintain that warehouse or whether we could help, we could fund it. I guess I see those as joint projects. We don't have a physical entity ourselves that would be able to run that kind of thing. That's why I thought of ourselves as being jointly sponsoring this with some other organization like the NPT. Mm -hmm. Well, that is something consistent with one of our priorities for the year. I mean, we did flag sustain preservation of sustainability and reuse as something we cared about as a commission. And we, um, we uh, wanted to scope out and figure out, like, is there a business plan that would make sense that somebody else could run? Like, we would promote it and study it. And we wanted to do that with the help of WPI um, and I think they will, they are doing a sustainability and reuse project that, you know, if it's up to the students to decide if they want to look at that. But so the question would be, you know, maybe we get a little bit more hands on and apply for a CPC grant to fund the hiring of a consultant to study the problem and create a business plan, which would then be available for somebody to run with. Take, take and run with. Is that what you're thinking, Georgia? Yeah. I, don't know, yeah, I don't know what the mechanism would be to make it happen, it's since we are not, you know, 501c3 ourselves. I So my one reaction, I well, I guess we should ask Ken, but one reaction is that I feel like since we're the town, we should be doing stuff that's like a that the town should be doing, mm -hmm. like town activities, but... Um, I don't know, any other reactions to that idea of a, bus a business plan study of um, a kind of a, like a, a, um, a reuse, a reuse store. There's, a, it's called Restore in Boston. The Boston, mm -hmm. city of Boston has this, the, it's called Restore and you can go there and shop for, for salvage. You know, the WPI, <clears throat> I think a, a good stepping point would be to see what happens with WPI and see, because if, if they take it on, they'll they'll do a lot of the groundwork. And then we, if that looks like a viable sort of a project, then, then we could take the next step <clears throat> to develop it further. Just a word of caution, I don't count too much on WPI because it's like, the town has absolutely no space at all for the students to come down and use to do this project. And so that's why the one last year didn't go forward with respect to that was supposed to be scheduled with the WPI students. So uh, be careful about putting that within your toolkit. I think Holly was offering to lodge everyone and... <laughs> <laughs> No, I think they were going to use, they're going to use that room at, um, at plus in the, but yeah, I mean, they'll, they're going to have to figure it out. They, I know they want to do it. Um, we've had a number of conversations with Dominic about it. Mary, do you have any ideas for town sponsored, you know, you're, you're looking at the whole landscape of preservation things that you feel fit particularly in the historical commission um, backyard? Particularly that I can think of right now. Even though it's been mentioned. I'm sorry? I said uh, not particularly, nothing I can think of right now other than what's been mentioned. I think most especially the surveys, you know, what are the tools that can help the HDC and other entities better do their jobs? Um, it would be neat to look at, it's been a while since I've looked at CPC page that Holly referenced that lists what other municipalities have done, but that might be good to look to see what, you know, creative things there might be. Does the NHC need some sort of web portal? You know, might be one. Is there a way that you could, could you get funding to, I don't know, better, like when everybody applies for the CPC or for the HDC and they're coming up with narratives and things like that, is there a way to store those items somewhere online so they can be more accessible than they currently are? 
I think, yeah, absolutely. We need a better website. <laughs> um, that would be incredible. The thing that I'm struggling with though, with both an, something like that, and frankly also the, I mean, there's, as I've said, the grants are critical and it's top priority. I just want to make sure that we recognize that on Nantucket, where preservation is so tied to the economy, both explicitly and implicitly, and you know the economy is based on property values and construction and real estate, um, tourism, heritage tourism. I, I just think that there should be a budget. You know, the town needs to have a budget for these things, um, and. I, I just, the town has stepped up with $50,000 in the budget this year um, for survey grants. And, you know, typically it's a, you, you, you don't use it unless you use it or lose it. And we're using it because it's a reimbursement grant. Um, so we are using all of that money or almost all of that money right now. And I'd like to see that money stay in the budget. I'm just a little concerned if we then turn to the taxpayers and if we get it, well, that's another project that doesn't get funded from, you know, the CPA, that pool is finite. It's oversubscribed and it should go for um, projects that aren't necessarily gonna happen if they don't get funded by the CPA. Mm -hmm. um, That's my concern about like the web. I mean, the town should fund a good website for the public to be able to access information about how to engage with the historical commission and, and that, frankly, the HCC needs a better website in my opinion. So it's just my opinion, but. I, I on that note, I just I would note that the town has um, really stepped up the game last quite a few years with the public outreach coordinator who does a fantastic job for the town. Um, you know, I, I get having more of a presence with it with a, a separate website, but quite frankly, from ones that I've seen from other historical commissions or even HDCs, it gets confusing for the public on which site they go to. Um, so I think it's good to stay within it. But um, I will say this, that um, I've talked to Florencia about um, having more of a updating our sites as far as bringing in the CLG aspect and preservation planning and all these different things. And um, that's going to be, that's, that's in the prog progress right now, work in progress. Um, it sounds so, like she can do more than we're actually, like if we engage with her, maybe, I mean, yeah, she is really capable. Yeah. Yes. She, she has a background in this kind of stuff. That's what she does. That's why the town utilizes, you know, if it wasn't for her, I don't think all this information during the whole COVID aspect would, would have gotten out. And I think the fact that we have somebody that that's what they do, they, they get the information out to the public is, is fantastic. Not every, you know, town like, like Nantucket ha has one. So, um, you know, anything that the commission or the, you know, both commissions want to have on the website, all I have to do is talk to Florencia and she can do it. Um, that she's, she was instrumental in getting the information out for everything from the HDC to resilient Nantucket, um, you know, so as well as, you know, if there's anything that um, we foresee that want to get it out, um, you know, I I've been able to uh, ask to put stuff in the town manager's newsletter. So again, there, there are many mechanisms of getting the information out. Yeah. And, and you I, know, that reminds me that there's actually an outstanding grant, CPC grant to update building with Nantucket in mind, which we had hoped to have become a web friendly document, you know, just make what's there, even if you're not coming up with new guidelines, just make what's there more accessible. Um, but that, you know, somebody needs to make that happen. I mean, maybe we could have, um, just another idea, if it fits under historic preservation, um, there's been a lot of talk about landscapes and landscapes is something that's really, uh, you know, interesting to me personally. And I think other people on the commission share that. Some kind of historic, uh, some joint HDC, NHC guidelines. I don't know. I mean, I really want to be effective. I don't want to just do stuff to like apply for money and have work. I mean, I want to really be effective. So are these 
is there something we could do with landscapes and some initiative around like getting the nurseries on board about what they're going to cover and um, recommending plants um, for resiliency with the coast, um, doing some kind of research on how um, the right kind of gardens reduce your water use or your water bill. Is that a potential project? Sort of like a building with Nantucket in mind, but in the landscaping realm rather than structures. Yeah, there's actually, I'm going to go grab a book that I have. I'm going to have to uh, uh, excuse myself uh, because I've got something else starting it too. Okay, I, thank you. I'll just show you my book. See, okay. this is by um, Lucinda Young. I think I bought this on eBay, but. Um, thank you, Ken. Thank you, thank you, Ken. I, I, um, I'm just leaving hearing that the pavement idea, you just need to do a little more research about how to frame it. Yeah, what I need to talk to, I wanna have uh, Holly, Holly give me a call on the beginning of the week and uh, so that I can frame it and then talk to the people up in Boston. Thank you. Okay, thanks, bye. Thanks, Ken. Bye, Ken. Um, well, okay, so what ideas do we want to present to our commission? I think the most practical one is the one that Ken and you are, Ken and Holly are working on, that uh, the one relating to let's replace the, uh, how, how we're going to help the town with the sidewalks uh, in the near term. And then let's go out further with the, with the uh, l uh, lighthouses and perhaps the uh, architectural artifacts, depending on what WPI comes up with. And then, of course, we also have the matching survey grants. Yeah. And landscapes is plants and landscapes is and next year. Okay. Well, let's put it on the list. Yeah. I mean, if it's a viable, if you guys think it's a viable project, it could go not, on the list. Not a bad idea. What the, What does that book tell you? The Lucinda Young book. Are, are oh, it just has. A, it's It's a resource guide. So it's. Um, you know, actual what's here, what are the existing plant communities, what are future plant community, or sorry, what, how do you create plant communities that are consistent with the natural landscape? How do you convert an existing landscape to a naturalistic style? Some case histories. It's a great little book. I mean, it just, this sort of thing could be updated to what people want to see and how they want to see it today. Um, and plus we have more information like rain gardens and things. Um, late to open space. I'm not so sh I guess I'm seeing it, but we'd have to, it's a bit of a reach for historical, the historical commission, except as, except as it, it relates to a sense of place and a sense of what Nantucket is. See, so that's I, why I, that's the connection is the right. sense of place. The natural environment is such a part of this place. Yeah. Um, and as we're seeing these div new subdivisions come up, you know, it's all privet or Leland Cypress and privacy screening and head screening. And the HDC is actually saying, well, if you want that, it has to be screened, <laughs> and, you know. Um, I don't know, Sconset is all, hedge, all hedges, all privet. All yeah, privet. well, that's almost yeah. like the Sconset style now. Yeah. Um, so we have until September 10th to get the grant in. So I think we have a bunch of ideas and we can put this on our August 20th um, agenda. I think it would be useful to go down to the CPC office and um, look at some of the grant applications, see if there's anything similar. Uh, and um, I also think it would be of course, really important to get that feedback from Ken about the, you know, reconstructing the, the Main Street Corridor preservation study, if that's actually fundable. Yeah. Holly, any other ideas or things we should consider or advice for us? No, but I would just caution um, one project at a time. <laughs> Yeah, no, we're only going to make one application for sure. <laughs> I mean, if we can even get it together, it's like it's these things are a lot of work. So this is still, I think, very tenuous, very tentative. But I just felt like we have an obligation to try to study this. And 
I, I think it's it's smart um, because people are, again, it's been around for the last 20 years and people just hear CPC and, and think they really know what it is, but it is a, a really great preservation, conservation, you know, um, open space and, and affordable housing kind of initiative all, to, all together. And I did outline it within our um, CLG application that this is something that the town of Nantucket has already been working on and giving funding sources um, for people. So for the preservation of a lot of our churches, which is great and other places, so. Um, so, okay. So I have sidewalks, lighthouses, um, plant materials and uh, reuse business plan and um, matching funds for surveys. Right, that's what we came up with, right? Yeah. Okay. And are you saying that, that we were only gonna make one application? <clears throat> Is that the current thinking? So yeah. if, if I feel like this lighthouse concept is uh, um, something that I wanna promote separately, I mean, is that something I may do through the Commission on Disabilities or through other means? Yes. Well, yeah, I think when we say lighthouses, I think we're talking about the fact that we have two of our three lighthouses that are really falling into decline and a partner that's not really making it easy to maintain them. Mm -hmm. the, I think the problem with that is going to be it's just too um, up in the air because the Coast Guard has to agree and we haven't advanced discussions enough. Yeah. It's definitely kind of premature for this year. <clears throat> Absolutely. Yeah, but we can keep a running list and get a start for next year on these things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. All right, folks. Holly, I hope everything's okay with, um, you know, the school situation. Looks like we're gonna have to quarantine. <sighs> I'm sorry. Your whole family? Yeah, yeah, I'm freaking out right now, so. Oh, Holly, I'm sorry. <gasps> Take a deep breath. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, all right. Everyone keep Holly and her family in their thoughts. And um, I think we can adjourn. Okay, thanks. Thank thanks, for, thanks for being with us, Holly. Mm -hmm. Okay.